This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. The rabbi of the town of Yanov was a great scholar and respected rabbi, and many people considered him a tzaddik. One of his sons was getting married, and the bride lived in a faraway town. So the whole family got together in carriages and wagons with horses and started heading out to the wedding. On the day of the wedding, it was getting close to the time to Davin Mincha, the afternoon prayer, and the family stopped in a little spot in the forest. And the rabbi of Yanov went a little deeper into the forest to find a place to concentrate on his davening. And since it was such a special day, his son getting married, he was deep in his thoughts and didn't realize how much time had passed. Now everyone had finished davening and they were trying to figure out where was the rabbi, the father of the chatan. Nobody could figure it out. And then eventually one of the carriages came by and said, oh, I think he got in one of the other carriages. He must be already on the way to the wedding. And so the family assumed that the rabbi, the father of the chatan, was on his way to the wedding. And everyone themselves got into the wagons and the carriages and continued riding till they got to the wedding. But when they arrived, they saw that the rabbi was not there. And the family went from wagon to wagon and carriage to carriage, asking everybody, wait, did the rabbi come with you? Where is he? Where did he go? And no one could figure out what happened to him. They realized that it would take a great deal of time to get back to the forest, if he was even there. And so they decided, even though it wasn't really what they wanted to do, to have the wedding without the rabbi, without the father of the chatan. And so they did. They had the wedding, and the next day, when the sun was up, they went back to the forest and tried to find him. But they searched everywhere and couldn't find him. They went to different towns nearby. They asked everybody. No one knew what happened to the rabbi. The rabbi had simply disappeared. And the family went back to Yanov, and they weren't going to mourn him because they were sure that he was still alive. They just didn't know where he was. Now, in the meantime, what happened to the rabbi? Well, the rabbi was davening Mincha. And he was so deep in his thoughts that when he finished, he didn't realize how deep into the forest he'd actually gone. And when he tried to find his way back to the road where everybody was waiting for him to go to the wedding, he got lost. He kept doubting himself. Maybe he should have gone to the right. Maybe he should have gone to the left. And he kept running himself in circles. In the meantime, he got deeper and deeper and deeper into the forest. Well, the sun started to set, and the rabbi said, what am I going to do? Eventually, he laid down, and he fell asleep because he was exhausted. He realized that he missed the wedding, and he figured when the sun came up, he would try to find his way out of the forest. But for many weeks, the rabbi could not find his way out of the forest. He somehow survived miraculously on the fruit and berries that he could find, some water whenever he found it. Of course, he didn't have his talisman to fill in. And what does the halacha say? What does the law say? When a person is lost in a situation like this, they start keeping Shabbos on the day that they remember his Shabbos. Now this rabbi was a tzaddik and a talmid chacham, a Torah scholar. And of course he knew this halacha. And he also knew what day the wedding was. And he assumed that he knew when Shabbos was. Not only did he assume, he was completely confident that he knew when Shabbos was. And he kept Shabbos on the day that he thought was Shabbos. But it turned out, the day that he thought was Shabbos was actually Friday. That's right, Thursday night and Friday, the great rabbi had confused which days were Shabbos, and he was keeping Shabbos on the wrong day. And not only that, when Shabbos actually came, he wasn't keeping Shabbos. Now this went on for many weeks, until eventually somebody found the rabbi in the forest and took him back home. And of course, everyone was so happy to see the rabbi back home in Yanov. And the rabbi was, of course, happy to be back home, but the rabbi arrived on a Thursday afternoon, which he thought was Friday afternoon. And he was very upset that nobody was getting ready for Shabbos. And he said to everybody, what are you doing? Tonight is Friday night. And they said, oh no, you were lost in the forest. You probably got confused. Tonight is Thursday night. And he said, no, tonight is Friday night. I can't believe that I was lost in the forest for all that time. And somehow all of you mix up the days and you don't know when Shabbos is? 
And they said, with all due respect, Rabbi, you're the one who got lost in the forest. We were continuing our lives as before. But the rabbi, who had always been stubborn, he insisted that he knew when Shabbos was. Of course he wouldn't break Shabbos. Do you think that he would have kept the wrong day of Shabbos in the forest? That's absurd. He was keeping Shabbos because that's when Shabbos was. Nobody could convince him. And that Thursday night, the rabbi kept Shabbos as if Thursday night was Friday night. And come Friday day, everybody's getting ready for Shabbos, but the rabbi is already deep in Shabbos. But then when Shabbos actually came on Friday night, the rabbi thought that it was Motzi Shabbos, so he stopped keeping Shabbos. I mean, on Shabbos itself, he put on tefillin and acted as if it was a weekday. This was crazy. This was the rabbi of the community. People really didn't know what to do. And then they remembered. The rabbi was childhood friends with Reb Shmilke of Nikolsburg, who became a great Hasidic Rebbe. And even though the rabbi of Yanov wasn't a Hasid, when the two of them were boys, and also Reb Shmilke wasn't a Hasid back then, they used to always learn together and they were very good friends. So the wife of the rabbi arranged that the Rebbe, Reb Shmelke, would come and spend Shabbos with them. And she explained to him what's going on. And so when Reb Shmelke arrived in Yanov and the rabbi saw that his old friend was there, he said, Shmelke, I'm so happy you're here. Come, you have to spend Shabbos with us. And he said, of course, that's what I was expecting. And of course, Reb Shmelke showed up on Wednesday afternoon. And he said, well, isn't tomorrow... Erev Shabbos, isn't tomorrow Friday? And the rabbi of Yanov, he looks at his old friend, the rabbi, Reb Shmelke, and he says, finally, no one believed me. And here, you're a great tzaddik, and you're a rabbi. They'll believe you. And he said, yes, they will. Now, in the meantime, the rabbi of Yanov's family didn't understand what was going on. I mean, the rabbi, Reb Shmelke, knew that Thursday was Thursday, and it wasn't Friday. And here he was going along with the rabbi of Yanov, and nobody understood. So the rabbi, Reb Shmelke, he told everyone, listen, I want you to get ready on Thursday night like it's Friday night. Prepare all the food that you normally prepare for Shabbos. Come dressed in your Shabbos clothes. We're going to meet in shul Thursday night as if it's Friday night and nobody say a word. And so everybody shows up in shul and all the food is cooked. And the rabbi of Yanov is very pleased because finally everyone came around to his reality, to the truth that he knew that tonight was Shabbos, even though it was Thursday night. And they led Kabbalat Shabbat, and they had a festive meal, and Reb Shmelke insisted that the Rabbi of Yanov make Kiddush, and he made Kiddush. And then he said to the Rabbi of Yanov, you know, my sweetest friend, it's a special occasion. You should really bring out some special wine. Bring out the old, strong wine. And the Rabbi of Yanov said, yes, this is a, definitely a special occasion, that my friend Reb Shmelke is here, let's do it. And they bring out the wine. And Reb Shmelke has a little l'chaim, and the rabbi does, and somehow Reb Shmelke is able to hide that he's not drinking so much wine. But the rabbi was knocking back the glasses of wine. He's so happy that everybody's finally keeping Shabbos with him, and he's happy that his old friend is there. And at some point, the rabbi gets drunk, and he puts his head down on the table and falls fast asleep. (laughs) Reb Shmelke tells everyone, shh, okay. Everyone get out of here. Don't anyone disturb the rabbi. Now go about your business. It's no longer Shabbos, of course. Tomorrow, come back here dressed in your same clothes and the same seats with the same food that we had served today. Now everyone go. And so everybody quietly left without making a single sound. And the rabbi continued sleeping. Reb Shmelke stood there himself all night and all day, making sure that nobody disturbed the rabbi. And that Friday night, everyone came back from davening. They were all in a great mood. They sat down in their same seats with the same food and the same clothes and the same everything. And when they finished the meal, Reb Shmelke, he turns to his friend, the Rabbi of Yanov, and he says, Rabbi of Yanov, isn't it time you lead us in Birkat Amazon? And the rabbi lifted up his head. And he looks around and says, yeah, wow, I didn't realize how much I drank. I must have been really tired after all that time in the forest. Reb Shmelke said, no, let's go. Birkat Amazon, so he starts, Babosai, Mirvel and Benjin. And they all bench Birkat Amazon, and then afterwards, everybody goes home, and it's Shabbos. It's Shabbos for the Rabbi of Yanov, and it's Shabbos for the community. Quietly, everybody thanks Rav Shmelke for intervening, and nobody ever told the Rabbi what happened. Of course, Rav Shmelke told them, don't anyone say anything, it'll make the Rabbi angry. And for the rest of his life, the Rabbi really believed that everyone had changed their mind. 
and was now keeping Shabbos like he did on Thursday night. And it took the little trick of the Rebbe, Reb Shmelke of Nicholsburg, to help his close friend, the Rabbi of Yanov, finally be able to keep Shabbos with everyone else. Ein, ein, ein.